Hi guys, welcome to uh, the fourth week of Look of the Week. If you're just joining us, um, this little t uh, weekly, sometimes bi-weekly segment that I'm doing is uh, basically taking a look at some of the, uh, some well-known solos um, and some w less well-known solos as well, and just taking a deep dive into the nuts and bolts um, and just trying to um, make a guess at what the guitarist might have actually been thinking um, when they were doing the solo. Obviously we won't know for sure, but um, we're just having a good guess at it. And then using some of the nuts and bolts from the solo um, that we've gleaned, um, we're gonna try and use it in our own soloing. And so um, I always po post my progress um, at the end of the week. And I encourage you guys to do the same. Um, if you're an avid user of Instagram, then you can um, tag me or direct message it to me and I can check out what you're doing and give you some feedback. Um, but there's no obligation to do that. Um, all of the backing tracks and all of the source packs and everything are over on Patreon channel. Um, if you uh, if you really like what I do here and you want to support me, um, then feel free to head over there. Um, it's uh, patreon.com forward slash extra guitar lessons. Uh, but don't feel any obligation if you don't want to. That's totally cool as well. Um, but yeah, if you want to support me going forward, then um, it's just over there. Um, so this week, Leon Bridges' Bad Bad News is what we're looking at. Um, and uh, Leon Bridges is a soul singer-songwriter from Fort Worth, Fort Worth, Texas. The guitarist Kenny Wayne Hollingsworth, I think that's right, um, is uh, playing most of the, uh, is doing most of the heavy work for the guitar. Um, he uses on this track um, more than likely an ES-175 um, or something similar. Um, I would imagine that um, most of you have either got a guitar with a humbucker or um, a guitar with a single coil. Um, and you can, if you don't have an ES-175, you can get close to that sound by just rolling off the tone a little bit on the guitar and selecting the neck pickup. Um, I'm using, this is my Hofner um, Thin President. Um, and um, I've got the tone rolled off a little bit, even on this, um, just to get closer to the sound of Kenny. The, uh, the solo itself is built on a vamp. Um, the vamp is, um, which is a G flat minor nine going to an F minor nine. Um, and Kenny focuses most of his energy on the, uh, the F minor kind of tonalities. Um, and this is kind of like a classic kind of jazz funk um, vamp. And it's the kind of thing that you probably find at a, a, jazz, a um, jazz or funk jam night. Um, and it's quite an extended solo. It's quite open out. It's not really necessarily building towards anything. Um, and so we can get kind of stuck um, a little bit sometimes on this stuff. I know that I do sometimes in, in jam nights and things where you just you either run out of ideas or you lose the thread of your solo um, and everything becomes just a little bit kind of rambly. Um, and so it's just, it, it's really good to have some techniques and some stuff in your pockets to be able to, to draw on, to be able to make your solo sound interesting. So Kenny uses a lot of um, blues and jazz language in the first half. It seems like the solo kind of kicks up a little bit in the, uh, in the second half. It seems like it's in two halves. And the first half is mainly kind of blue scale Dorian stuff. Um, that is definitely, you know, him thinking about the kind of Dorian thing. And you've got the, all of that kind of stuff that he's playing. So, um, it's kind of very uh, Grant Green, Wes Montgomery, uh, George Benson kind of style. Um, certainly that lick, really fast lick at the end is definitely George Benson-y. So the two areas that we're looking at is not the blues and the Dorian stuff, um, but we're gonna take a look at the chord grab that transitions him into the second half, and then also the uh, harmonic minor lick that he plays off the back of that. 
So let's take a look at the lick. So chord grabs is the first thing. Um, so chord grabs are standard fodder for jazz and blues guitarists. Um, they're, they're a harmonic device and they're just kind of, they're used to kind of either restate the harmony sometimes. It's kind of good, they like ground themselves. A lot of a lot of pianists and, and keyboard players do this. So Herbie Hancock, Keith Jarrett, um, Bill Evans, they all use this kind of style where they're playing a melody in their left hand and they might just, you know, kind of either punctuate something in their, uh, sorry, in their right hand, I don't know my left and right today, um, and they might punctuate something in their left hand. Um, and it might be either to kind of suggest a new type of harmony, or it might be just to reinstate the harmony that they're, they're currently playing over the top of, or it could just be something rhythmic. Um, obviously on guitar, we don't have the ability to be able to use both our hands normally um, so uh, for, for playing notes and chords and things. So we have to kind of do it during the actual thing. So um, people like Wes Montgomery took this further and kind of soloed with chords. Um, so check out stuff like D Natural Blues for that. It's a stunning example of that. Or Jim Hall's My Funny Valentine, his solo on that from uh, his collaboration with Bill Evans on Undercurrent is, is just incredible. The first time I heard that, it just fell off my chair. Um, and even in rock music, you hear it as well. Like David Gilmore uses it in Another Brick in the Wall, part two, the solo on that. The Okay, when he, he kind of just punctuates after a, a string bend and then just comes back in with that chord. So... The first three, he does, Kenny, going back to Bad Bad News, he's got three chord grabs. Okay, and the first one he plays um, is kind of middle neck area, middle to almost to the top of the neck area. And it's, it's an inversion of an F minor seven. And he uses this, and then he plays a partial. This is just playing a C and an F, so it's, it's, he's playing some fourths there. And then he slides into um, another F minor seven up um, inversion up here. So he slides into it, which is kind of quite typical of jazz. Okay. Um, and here, this kind of just gives a, because he's going up the fretboard, it just gives a bit of an intensity to, to bring us up to this next bit, which is the harmonic minor vocabulary that he, he uses. So it's it's a good thing to be able to build your solos with. So you can do what he's doing, or you could use it in the middle of your of your playing as well. So something like that. You know, you don't necessarily have to do exactly like that, but. That's the kind of thing I might well play. Um, and and it just just adds a little something to your solos. Like I said, it just punctuates. And it just breaks up the, uh, the, the sometimes if you're playing a, you know, a line of semiquavers or a line of quavers, it just kind of breaks it up a little bit. So the, the second bit off the back of this is the harmonic minor um, lick that he plays. And this, this is a fairly exotic scale. Um, if, you're, if you're only familiar with pentatonic so far, you know, this might be you know, pretty out there for you. But a, a harmonic minor scale is, is this. It's normally used, like we would use it over a natural minor, uh, sorry, a natural um, minor seven. 
um, or you could use it over a minor major seven as well because then it you know you're you you're really bringing out that that e the natural the natural seventh in there um, and the lick that we're looking at is kind of like a, it's a it's a bit of a classic jazz phrase um, and it's using a technique called enclosure so enclosure is basically where you've got a note that you're aiming for so in this particular instance it's the f and he goes above the note and then below that so above the note below the note and then the actual note itself so and that's kind of a very benson thing to do that um that little triplet and then he goes down does a similar thing on the uh on the c um but he, here whereas with the other one he did it like diatonically because he was using the the g which is the the ninth and then the major seven and then back to the tonic. Here, he's on the fifth, but he's going chromatic. So he's going up to a sharp five and then a flat five and then to the actual fifth itself. So he's going again above and below. So... Okay. Um, this is a kind of, it's, it's bebop language. Um, it's a kind of thing that, I mean, I wouldn't like to say who kind of came up with this lick initially. It probably just evolved. But it's certainly been well documented with people like Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie and Miles Davis. So go and check out some of the, the early Miles stuff, which has got Charlie Parker on it. Um, or some of this like Savoy sessions with um, uh, with Charlie Parker that's got Dizzy on it as well. And you'll be able to hear them using it. Lots of sax players used it. Lots of trumpet players. Um, and guitarists like Charlie Christian as well used it around that ear as well. Um, so it's standard jazz language um, and a bit of a stock lick. So it's worth getting that into your solo, um, into, your, into your own playing. So you could try that lick and use it in lots of different places as well. Don't just use it in one place, learn it in, in a couple of different other areas as well. Um, so that you're not just kind of bound to this area. Um, that's the way that you can achieve a little bit more creative freedom with you, within your soloing. So, um, it's it's super important that you uh, take this stuff, get creative with it. Um, as I said, backing tracks and the source packs and stuff are on Patreon, but I would imagine that most of you can kind of slow down this video on, on YouTube if you're watching it on YouTube and um, and get the, uh, the content out of it from there. Um, but if you want to support me um, and what I'm doing, um, trying to bring uh, lessons on, uh, on YouTube that can hopefully improve your, um, your soloing, um, then Patreon is the place to do it, um, and that's uh, patreon.com forward slash x to guitar lessons. Um, and yeah, all of the source packs and backing tracks are there. So uh, remember to post your, po post your progress, um, and uh, you can tag me on Instagram or just direct message me if you're not comfortable with that. And uh, yeah, good luck with it. Um, and uh, oh, I should say the full solo is also transcribes, and that's on Patreon as well. So um, head on over there if you want to have a go at the full solo. Um, apart from that, see you next time. Bye.